my god, I swear, Tim Cook was basically watching my videos and was like, Good morning, I think Drew likes the new iMac too much. So we're going to delay his favorite features so he cannot get them in a single product. Apple, you know what you're doing. You know exactly what you're doing. You knew that as soon as his Apple Silicon redesigned iMac was going to come out, I was basically going to buy it and not buy another Mac for four to five years. So they're like, what can we leave out so that Drew feels like he has to upgrade later? Also, we got a bunch of new MacBook news to cover. Let's begin. So yeah, as upsetting as this may be for some, there's a bright side of looking at it as at least Apple is considering these things, but yeah, from the latest Bloomberg report we got today, who has a pretty reliable track record, thanks to Mark Gurman, apparently Apple has developed versions of MacBooks with cellular and iMacs with Face ID, and they're also developing a redesigned version of the MacBook Air that could launch by the end of this year. Normally these types of like far out reports end up being wrong, so my personal prediction, we're not going to see a new design of the MacBook Air in 2021, but maybe early 2022. That's just my safe bet. It feels like that time everyone said by the end of 2020, we would have a mini LED iPad Pro and that never happened. So I'm just trying to keep expectations realistic, you know, shoot for the stars, land on the moon. But while sadly this report says we won't see Face ID or cellular connectivity in any Mac soon, it does say that Apple wanted to put Face ID in this year's iMac refresh, which gets me so excited because once again, maybe Make this bigger, put it on a stick, that's my dream computer. And this thing already has Face ID on it, right? So if they found a way to put Face ID on the iMac, I would be all over that. But at the same time, it's probably not something I should really be too passionate about, given I do wear an Apple Watch. I don't know if you guys noticed in all these videos, but I'm kind of a fan of Apple products. And the Apple Watch is pretty cool because when it's unlocked and everything, you can just walk up to your Mac and it'll unlock automatically. Sometimes it's a little bit slower than others, but maybe if I'm getting a new Apple Silicon iMac, Mac this year, it won't have that kind of latency issue that the iMac Pro occasionally had. So buying a whole new Mac just so you can get some better biometrics is <laughs> probably not a great decision, but either way, I'm still very happy to hear the first time ever that Apple's working on cellular connectivity for these new Macs, which makes a whole lot of sense if you consider by 2022, Apple wants to be switching to their own in-house designed modems. Yeah, remember that? Right now they're using Qualcomm modems for 5G and all that stuff. Don't get Apple started on 5G. Oh no, I just realized when Apple unveils cellular connectivity for the MacBook, we're going to have to hear about 5G for another 67 5G, minutes. 5G, 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 5G
I'm still kind of sad about. My audience is definitely a bit more in love with the touch bar than most, but we do not reflect the average consumer. And from what I've heard, there's a large majority of people that don't like the touch bar outside of the tech community. So probably makes sense that Apple's doing away with it, but I'm still going to miss it. And I'm going to still wish that they have it as an option at checkout. You know, how hard would that be? You can save yourself some money and go with function keys, or you can spend a little bit extra and keep your touch bar. That way, some people who want it can still have it. I know it's probably too hard. They won't do that. But the report about the redesigned MacBook Air is that apparently they want it to be even thinner and even lighter than it already is. So I guess we're kind of going back to 12 inch MacBook days here, except the display is supposed to stay around the same size. This report is actually suggesting that the MacBook Air will get thinner and lighter via shrinking down the bezels along the display. Now this I'm kind of a fan of. Basically, we take the 12 inch MacBook design, get rid of those bezels so that we can fit the display all the way to the edge. That way you still have your 13 inch display that we're used to with our MacBook Airs, but you have it in such a compact and small footprint. And this report is also saying that return version of MagSafe would come to this MacBook Air as well. So honestly, I feel like 2021 is going to be the year of the Mac leaks. I mean, iPhones sound really, really boring so far. Not going to lie. It's like, okay, 120 hertz. Okay, the notch is going to be slightly smaller until the last minute. And then everybody's going to be like, oh, wait, actually, the notch is the same size. Whoops. And we may or may not get a port on the next iPhone. Okay, what else is there to talk about? Whereas all these new leaks about the upcoming Mac lineup sound really exciting. Cellular, Face ID, getting thinner bezels across the entire lineup, the iMac getting redesigned. I'm very excited for future generation Macs, and I hope you guys are too. So let me know what you guys think of no more touch bar, but the return of the SD card slot, thinner and lighter MacBook Air, and that type of thing. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I hope you're watching, Tim, because I want you to find a way to fit Face ID on this year's iMac. Otherwise, I'm just gonna buy it without Face ID, and I'll live without it for a few years. All right, I I'm not budging on that one. I'll see you guys in the next one.